Hey, good evening, CR. <laughs> no. Oh. oh, good evening, RA. <laughs> All right, there's a quarter in the jar. I got it. Sorry. <laughs> for those that copyright and things like that, I apologize. You know, we did that for a few years, so now it's time for RA. Thank you for coming this evening. And uh, it's a joyful night. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and give some praise. Working, 
Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. Never stop, you are, you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall And all those lonely roads that I have traveled on There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground And the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching in the healing and the hunting Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces Every minute, every moment Where I've been and where I'm going Even when I didn't know it I couldn't see it There was Jesus For this man who needs amazing kind of grace For forgiveness at a price I couldn't pay I'm not perfect so I thank God every day There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching in the healing and the hunting Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces Every minute, every moment Where I've been and where I'm going Even when I didn't know it I couldn't see it There was Jesus in the valley
In the healing and the hurting Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces Every minute, every moment Where I've been and where I'm going Even when I didn't know it I couldn't see it There was Jesus All throughout my history Your faithfulness walked beside me The winter storms made way for spring In every season from where I'm standing I see the evidence of your goodness All over my life All over my life I see your promises in fulfillment All over my life When I'm weak The fear may come But fear will leave You lead my heart To victory You are my strength And you always will be I see goodness all over my life all over my life I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life all over my life see the cross the empty grave the evidence is endless All my sins roll away Because of you, oh Jesus See the cross, the empty grave The evidence is endless All my sins roll away Because of you, oh Jesus oh Promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises. All over my life, all over my life. So why should I fear? Oh, the evidence is here. And why should?
is a name that levels mountains Carves out highways through the sea I've seen its power unravel battles Right in front of me There's a faith that stands defiant It sends Goliath to his knees I've seen his praise unravel shadows Right off my feet Cause that's the power of your name Just a mention In the furnace unafraid The kind of daring expectation That every prayer I make Is on an empty Awesome, guys. Thanks so much for worshiping with us. If you would, please turn to someone around to you and say hello. And Miss Joanna is going to come and share some announcements with us.
Welcome everyone to Recovery Alive. My name is Joanna. I have some exciting things to share with you before Lucy comes up to share with us tonight. First, as you came in, you should have received a recovery card. Please raise your hand if you didn't get a card and we will get one to you. These cards are how we connect with you and how you can let us know how we can pray for you. Only Pastor Nick and Christy see these, so they are confidential, but we would love to be able to pray for what is going on in your life. You can take a minute and fill those out now as we will collect them in a few minutes with the offering. Okay, process groups are an essential part of our recovery and we will be kicking off a new session of groups in two weeks. These groups will start the first week of November. The ladies group will begin Sunday, November 5th at 3 p.m. here at New Life and the guys group will begin Wednesday, November 9th at 6.30. If you are interested in participating or if you have questions, please put your name and phone number on the sign-up sheets out in the lobby and we will be in touch with you. Okay. Next Sunday, October 29th, New Life will be hosting our annual Trunk or Treat event from 5 to 7 p.m. This indoor event is open to the community and we would love to have our Recovery Alive family there too. If you are interested in setting up a table or helping in another way, let Christy know. Also, invite your friends, family, and coworkers to come along. As Lucy makes her way up here to share with us, we're gonna take a minute to receive our offering. Giving back is a part of our recovery and the fund giving, funds given here help us reach our community with the hope and encouragement that we have experienced in this program. Okay, I'm gonna pray over the offering and Lucy. Father God, we thank you so much for Friday nights and that we can gather here together. Lord, we pray over the offering that you bless it. And Lord, we just ask that you be with Lucy. Open our hearts to hear what you have to say through her words and help us to receive it. Father, we love you so much and we thank you so much for Jesus and his work on the cross. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Hello? Okay, there we go. I'm Lucy, faithful believer, and I am in recovery for codependency, workaholism, OCD, anxiety. <laughs> well, all right, so tonight we are still in step two, and we are talking about restoring our, us to sanity. Uh, step two, so we're going to go through that, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. So I thought, hey, let's, let's look at some definitions of restore and sanity so we know what we're talking about. Uh, restoration is not about replacing something broken, but taking something broken, damaged, or lost and returning it to its unimpaired original purpose. What is sanity? Well, we know that uh, insanity has been described as doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result each time. But what is sanity? Sanity has been defined as wholeness of mind and making decisions based on truth. Whose truth are we talking about? God's truth. So I thought, let's look at a verse about restoration. Uh, this is my favorite verse. Uh, it means a lot to me in my testimony. Joel 2.25. The Lord says, I will give you back what you lost, the swarming locusts, the hopping locusts, the stripping locusts, and the cutting locusts. So there's other versions. I might have a different version. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's different versions, but they all mean the same thing. God is going to restore us. But how is he going to restore us? What is our part? If you look at Joel a little higher uh, in that same chapter, chapter 2, 12 through 13, the subject is a call to repentance. This is why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is still time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, 
slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. So how do we get restored to sanity? Repentance, giving our lives over to God. When we turn to God who is powerful enough to help us build or rebuild something better, we also discover that his power can restore us to sanity. And restoration to sanity leads us to recovery. Jesus gives us strength to face the fears that in the past have caused us to fight, to flee, to freeze, to use. Insert your bad habit here. (laughs) Recovery is a daily program. Sometimes recovery, honestly, is minute to minute, hour to hour. There have been times in my life where I have just been able to make it what each minute to the next minute. There are seasons like that. We need to, God to give us the strength, acceptance, integrity, new life, and trust to allow us to make sane decisions based on his truth. So let's look at a couple of those words. What is acceptance? We learn to have realistic expectations of ourselves and others. So many times, uh, you know, we get disappointed in people because they didn't live up to our expectations of them. So if we adjust those, that helps our perspective. What is integrity? We begin to follow through on our promises. Others start trusting what we say. What is new life? We discover that we have an opportunity for a second chance. And with God, more than second chances. We do not have to live by our old ways any longer. Uh, In the Recovery Alive book, there's a phenomenal testimony. Um, I did not, I wasn't gonna read it tonight. (laughs) It's too long, but um, Seth talks about the process of restoration to sanity. I'm learning what God does in us while we are waiting is as important as what we are waiting for. God had to restore me first. And I gave this, I've talked about this uh, Bible story before. We see this in the Israelites when they left Egypt. The walk to the promised land was only supposed to be two weeks. It took them 40 years. Blows your mind, but Jesus had to, a process, sorry, God had a process of restoring them. It was their journey because although God took the Israelites out of Egypt, he had to take Egypt out of the Israelites. We have to allow God to change us in our unhealthy ways. We did not get to our worst overnight and it's definitely not going to take overnight to restore us. Making the choice to humble ourselves unleashes the restorative power of God, a power great enough to resurrect hope from the dead. Second Chronicles 7, 13 through 14 reads, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven. I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. When we choose to humble ourselves, we tell our secrets, we admit our poverty, and we accept our imperfection. And then we find rest. Why? Because when shame comes calling, threatening to uncover and expose us, 
we can look shame in the face and say, too late, I already did. It is then in our lowly state that our resistance end and our rest begins. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30 says, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. So I ask you, what are you asking God to restore in your life? Relationships, jobs, integrity, sanity. As long as you are here on this earth, there is still hope. Hope of restoration, there's hope of healing, hope of peace and rest for your souls. Hope for forgiveness from a God that loves us unconditionally. So when I was sharing tonight, Nick kept, kept emphasizing testimony of my own. And I, so I honestly had to think really hard, like there is a lot that God has restored in my life. I've spent you know, 24 years in counseling and recovery, um, healing from my parents' horrible divorce. And God has restored me. I can say that I would not be married today had I not gone through all that healing. But the season I'm in right now, God is restoring me from all the things that codependency has taken from me. And what I mean by that is there's, I look back in my life and I think of all the times I should have said no or I should have set boundaries, or I let things happen to me that I should have put an end to. And although at the time I didn't realize that I was struggling with codependency or didn't understand the depths of it, um, God is now healing me of those things in my life. Uh, so it's been a journey, but I can say I've even 24 years into recovery that I have had breakthroughs just this year with people in my life that I have codependency with. I've finally been able to set boundaries. So the last scripture I wanted to share with you, it speaks a lot to me, um, that God knows us personally, deeply, uh, whenever we're struggling. You know, this would be a great scripture to read, Psalm 139, 1 through 12. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways, good or bad. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. You hem in me behind me before you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me your hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. My favorite line in this scripture is, even if I make my bed in the depths, you are there. No matter how far we run from God, into the craziest, most horrible things, God is still there. He's still waiting on, he's waiting on us. He wants to restore us. He wants to love us and make us whole. So thank you for letting me share. <laughs>
All right, we're going to close out in serenity prayer, and then we're going to go to our groups afterwards. Okay. All right, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you'll make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Okay. You guys are dismissed. <laughs>